Hi, Tango. You've been busy. <laughs> Check chat. Love Zed and Green. Why am I in a glass prison? Check chat. Check chat. Okay. Okay. There it is. What? Oh, Green, you still got shell gravity? What? Are you kidding me right now? Oh, oh my gosh. A furious cocktail, have every potion effect applied at the same time. Serious dedication. Use another writing to upgrade or reevaluate relay stresses. Cover me. Is that is that it? Is that it? Is that, is that, is that, look at this guy. They have I've been busy, apparently. I am so confused. Why? <laughs> Why am I in the shopping district? Where even am I? This, we're by the entity? What are we doing over here? Okay, let's tear down our safety prison. And then is he on? He's not on. I, n neither of them are on. But this feels like mostly Zed's doing, I'm guessing. I think I know what this is. I got to get a hold of Zed. There you are. <laughs> hey, man. You're looking a lot livelier than uh, when I saw you earlier. What? 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 How, did, how was I so awesome overnight? I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I'm amazing yeah. at this game. For the first time in your life, you've become amazing at this yes, game. Yes, yeah, and, and I did nothing. Just my, my amazingness <laughs> exudes forth. What did you do? How, we, how? We, we have had an adventure. I'm telling you, you've been doing things for hours, my I friend. Mean, um, I mean, <laughs> you levitated me with a shulker. You covered me with a furious cocktail. You gave me a hoe. And I mean, I, I noticed I got a full set of netherite gear too. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, some of that stuff you might need to no, give back. It was no, just kind of, no, it was kind no, of no, no, no. It's mine. It's my achievement. I, I acquired <laughs> well, this uh, well. through my sheer... Oh, oh, shiny. Trade, trade you. Shiny? Swap seeds. Shiny? <laughs> I like shiny. That shut you up. I'll give you this, man, which you, you've earned. You've earned. If oh. I can have my armor. And all hope, right, all please. right. Fine, 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 <laughs> fine. I don't like netherite anyways. Oh, I got my very own... <laughs> thing with the, did it. With the thing oh it's amazing i'm so Although excited technically technically you didn't give anybody an afk advancement that's that's what that's awarded for but um <laughs> awarded for nothing <laughs> afk baby <laughs> afk oh i see i was wondering why you spelled it that way awarded for <laughs> nothing you you with the alliterations always of course of course so give me Absolutely. the tail what what, what? And, and green was apparently involved green was here too he had to help man so okay right i've been waiting for a while now for you to go afk and finally you did your big lazy face yeah, I, I need um, wool for redstone and stuff <laughs> Oh, well, you probably don't have very much because I, I quickly took you away from here. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you might need to AFK again another day. No, yeah, um, that's fine. That's fine. But, but yeah, I started off. So, OK, I didn't want to just give you one advancement. No. I wanted to give you as many as I could. So I gave you four at the same time. So the first three you, got, you just did by yourself, I'm guessing, right? The first four. Yeah, I got you um, a furious oh, cocktail. A so I, you, you were you were guzzling potions like an absolute <laughs> crazy <laughs> person. <laughs> I love it. Um, then I then I covered you in debris. I, covered, uh -huh. I gave you all my armor and uh -huh. you got it all. Uh -huh. I, I was surprised that you hadn't already got that one. Oh, hey, no, I don't, I don't do netherite stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the levitation one. And I was over by the entity. Is that where the shulker was? Is that what that that's where the shulker was? Yeah, ah. we, we didn't know whether to bring you to the shulker or the shulker to you, but we decided that you yeah. were the more disposable. Exactly. Of the two. If I die, that's fine. <laughs> My life does not mean as much as the shulker. <laughs> yeah. So we we thought we'd take you to it, and um, yeah, man, you flew up in the sky fifty blocks. It was it was crazy. You you've literally had well, the I most adventures wait. of your whole life. Because I had replay mod. Right? I always have replay mods. So I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna do a little thing. I want to oh. see. I want to see what look. Yeah. I get to Watch. See how I was abused overnight. Oh no! Please. Okay, there is one moment in particular that I hope you don't notice. Uh, um, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's all caught on video. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, this was my favourite time hanging out with you, I yeah, think, because I, I didn't have glad to. I, you didn't have to listen to me and stuff. <laughs> I appreciate your, your body. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's, that's a weird thing that's to say. Weird. Okay, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you let me know when you're doing future advancements, all right? I want to be part of more of these. They sound fun. Absolutely. And hey, if you ever, you know, if I'm ever just like stood around doing nothing, feel free to uh, come uh, and y- make your Use your body, apparently, right? <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, this, let, let's let's leave. This yeah, is okay, weird. gotta go. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Well, now that we're done having our body kicked around the server by ZF and Grian, what do you say we get to work on a little side project called Decked Out? What do you say we do some redstone today? What do you say we fill this entire new hole? with massive amounts of redstone. So today we're gonna take the first steps into making Decked Out actually do something and be more than just a pretty looking dungeon. This giant hole is our play area. We have level one up there, which we're gonna be doing a little bit more work on level one today, I think. Level two is coming soon down here. I have since dug out this, what would normally be a giant hole, but is now nothing compared to that one. This hole here is going to be the beginnings of some crazy redstone. In particular, this is going to be the card shuffler, the card processor, the deck unloader, all that stuff. Everything related to do with card processing and your choker deck full of cards is gonna happen right here. Okay, you die now. Check it out, look, look what Zed did. <laughs> Zed put my little trophy in the wall, and it's amazing, it looks, look how cute it is. It's got a little bed in there and everything for all my AFK-ness. Okay, okay, we have some pretty exciting redstone here that I wanna show you guys what it does and how it works and things like that. Aw, uh, warning, redstone talk coming up. Okay, so this is actually some really cool stuff here that I'm excited to go over here. It's, it's kind of broken down into many different sections here. The first section is right here. This is the shulker unloader, the, the, uh, the, the player's shulker box full of cards will fall through that hole up there into the hopper the shulker will get unloaded and all the cards will go down this line here when the shulker is empty it'll get smashed by the piston and fall into there right there and i haven't done anything with it right yet but obviously eventually i'm gonna have to like take it down to the end there so that it can be reloaded with the cards when the game is over that's a future tango problem now the cards will start moving along and the first section they go into is the permanent card processing area i have 15 slots here to process permanent cards so i can support up to 15 of them without having to you know redo all the redstone now if you remember though permanent cards are they're played immediately and their effects stay in place throughout the entire game so they don't need to go into the card shuffler they don't actually need to go into their deck to be played throughout the game they're played immediately so that's why this is happening right away here and uh, like i said we have 15 sorters here i can set up and the key thing here is all the permanent you can only have each permanent card in your deck once so we've got a little extra like counting system here so that uh when the, the first time it's played the system will turn on and subsequent times nothing will happen you won't get any more signal and one of the things i really like about both the way I handle the permanent card processing and down there, which are the regular card processing, is I've got the, you'll see these four stacks of layers. These are the the, the location or the, the place where I can do custom redstone for each card. So the, for instance, the, the permanent cards, we have like 15 slots right there for permanent cards. And each of those slots, you know, basically either a honey or a slime block will push down or something. They all have like a little reserved location. And you can see for me to do redstone for that card. So I have plenty of space, obviously I could pull this way out. And then the effects of those things will either fill back into the system to draw another card, or it's gonna 
go out to the redstone out here, you know, modify clank, modify hazard, whatever it is we need to do. So any card that makes it through the permanent processing area right here is now a normal card that needs to be shuffled, put into the player's deck and, you know, distributed throughout the course of the game. And I want to make sure that those cards are heavily randomized so the player has no idea what order they're going to go in. And that's what this is here. This is the card shuffler. And the way this works is actually pretty simple. Basically, any cards that come in here will flow into these droppers here. We have eight droppers. You can see the arrows here. They're just making a basic loop here. And as long as cards are coming in and for a good 10 or 15 seconds after the last card, these are just going to be getting clicked here. This, this is going to extend. It's going to be little things like tick, 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 tick. And all the droppers are just rotating the cards randomly in a huge circle here. So they get randomized quite well. Uh, and then when they're done, the hoppers below here will all unlock and all the cards will flow into the chest uh, and eventually into this uh, dropper down there. And that's where the cards are ready to be distributed on a clock and be processed in the cards processing area. I have set up a 48 slots, 48 card processors for normal cards and I hope that's the right amount. I kind of went a little overboard because I wanted to make sure it was extensible. I know the game is going to have like at least 30 cards. So I figured let's add some more, quite a bit more slots for future expansibility. Uh, and each one of these, of course, is a sword that's going to pull the card out. And you can see I have signs here and I can write the name of each card that I put in each sorter so that I easily know what line corresponds to what card. And each card handler, of course, is just a standard sorter, sorter to start with, but it's a little bit, a uh, little bit extra, kind of like we did with permanent over here where it was only the first card to be processed right here we want to be able to process three cards of each type so the rule is you can have one card in your deck three times a non-permanent it's like a normal card you know if you get a card called blah you can have three blahs in your deck and after that they just simply won't be processed and the way we do that is we have a little dropper here that every time it does it's pushing an item into that hopper and then you know eventually when it's when that dropper is empty this piston lifts up and therefore the signal can't get through and just they'll, they won't be processed they'll just be ignored and up top here this complicated nonsense of redstone here uh this is the card scheduler the card prioritizer i guess you could say its job and it's basically just two uh two etho hopper clocks here its job is to ensure cards are played at a correct rate i guess so you know essentially cards will be played every 30 seconds while the game is active and that's what the first one this uh hopper clock that's kind of buried in there every 30 seconds it'll say hey play a card play a card play a card right but there's also other times you want to play cards for instance processing one of our cards may say draw two more cards and we don't want these to conflict we don't want to immediately try and process those two cards plus conflict with a scheduled card that may be coming up so what we do is we schedule everything whether it's a a card that was you know on a 30 second timer or a card that was immediately processed by another card it's all put into a schedule here and what we have here is a cool or a card draw cooldown which ensures that cards can only be played at a certain rate like every six seconds so you know if a 30 second happens and a card's ready to go but at the same time another card is processing two cards it'll queue up like three cards to be played and then those will be played in succession as long as cards are in the queue to be played as cards are processed they're going to follow this top ice track here and they're obviously going to get picked up by the sorters that are in the back there there. Uh, but once they do, it'll loop around. The card will be spit out the droppers in the front here. And then this right here is essentially the discard line where it'll go down to that mess over there and most likely be put back into their shulker box to be processed. But you'll notice I've got these little barrels here. It's kind of like, it's great. That's how I'm going to handle ethereal cards. I just I just simply swapped out the, uh, the dropper with a barrel. So if it's an ethereal card, it means it can only be played once and it's automatically destroyed. It just goes in the barrel and it sits there. And, you know, like once every two weeks or something at most i'll have to come by and empty the barrel if ever but in addition to ethereal cards which of course destroy themselves immediately as soon as they're played there's also the rule that i'm going with where every card that's played has a five percent chance of being destroyed after play this is to keep their death fresh to to make them want to constantly have to get new cards and things like that um and that's what this does down here there's a five percent chance down here with a series of droppers it's a one in five chance followed by a one in four chance to get that five percent and then you know it'll it basically will fall into one of these hoppers here and go into the uh destroy chest or if not it'll fall in right there's where the shelter will be loaded but i'm actually really excited because i've got a lot of power a lot of flexibility in what the cards can do i can have a card that has a chance a chance of destroying 
itself, which I would do just by putting a chance out here in the card's content redstone area and then triggering the destroy system. Or I could even have it like have a chance of destroying the next card or having the next card that's played automatically be skipped or all kinds of these little options to give flavor to the different cards and make synergy between them. So there you have it. That's about as much detail as I probably want to go into. I know a lot of you are probably phasing out by now, but that's the card unloader, permanent card processor, card shuffler, uh, normal card processor, card destruction, card scheduler, all that stuff is now done here. Uh, I'm not going to go into more detail now. If you guys want to, you know, if you have more questions, stop by a live stream when I'm around here, and I'll be happy to uh, go over more of the details over at uh, twitch.tv slash tango tech. Going through the first level of the dungeon here, the Frozen Crypt, it's it's 99% done, but there is a piece that we have neglected over here, through the courtyard, over the river, over the river again, into the uh, foyer of the crypt. It's right here, right down here. Uh, we got some building to do. We got some building, and I, I got. I want to add a little basement to the crypt because it, it's important, right? We want to have our first kind of multi-layered thing here. We got the upstairs pretty much done. I want to decorate it a little bit more, but down here we need some thing. We need some magic happening. So let's get on that. And we're done, just like that. We first thing we did was added some flames here for some lighting and the various wither skulls there as a backdrop. And again, the lighting is key everywhere inside deck deck. And look at all the ones, look at all the twos. It's dark, it's just right. So we have two ways to go down. Both of them are very dark. Uh, we have a left and a right here. We'll go down here first, I guess. Taking a little, little simple staircase going down, opening up into the first of a little side crypt room. We got some new coffins here with some candles and it's kind of like these are intended to be like wall tombs or something. I'm not quite sure, but the, all the bordering with the deep slate looks pretty good. And of course, we detailed the walls and made them all old and broken and everything like that. And of course, the lighting has to be just right. Going back up and over to the other side now, a similar but slightly different room here. A couple of new kind of coffin, coffin, coffin? What's a coffin? <laughs> Coffins, crypts, sarcophagi, whatever these want to be here. They, they're looking all right with a little, you know, the an anvils are the theme in here and then a little bit fancier uh, ceiling and stuff. I like this room. I like this room. And then going down in here, I intentionally wanted a very large room in here. This room is, it's like, it's like a little bit out of place, I guess, because you're in a crypt and now why, what's this doing now? What is all this, right? It's supposed to kind of like be a little underground sorcerer laboratory or something. I'm not sure, but it works. So we have all kinds of like study equipments and books and things growing and scientific research. But this is the first time I've actually tried to use uh, the mangrove stuff and I really like it. We got all these little wardrobes here. Da -da 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 -da. I probably should put something back there. Uh, and we went with floating candles down here which you know we obviously had to light up this large space here so certain decisions had to be made i'm not sure if that's the best one but they look kind of magical floating i'm okay with it it, it does its, it does its thing and i apparently missed a hole in the ceiling uh do i have a thing maybe we could there, there we go. I should probably hang something from right there. It looks like we need like a chandelier of some kind. Nothing too elaborate, but we need something right there. So that's it. That's the crypt down here. And I like it. I like this room, a big open room. I'm just imagining people running from ravagers down here. There'll probably be two or three hiding spots for uh, for artifacts down here to bring you down here in the basement and, uh, you know, let the chase begin. Oh, oh, I almost forgot to show you, of course, down here now. You got, like I said, you got all these little like wardrobes here. This one in particular. There's a little, little secret passageway here that leads, oh, hi, Bat, that leads up into the ice tunnels back here. Always intended to happen, and I like the way it works. Now, I am aware that a Ravager won't be able to path down here, probably. Obviously, if the doors are closed, it won't, and I don't think it'll be able to get through right here. That's okay. It's one of the few places in the dungeon here that you can kind of evade the Ravager and transition to a completely different section, but I think it's pretty, I gotta put pressure plates out so those doors close automatically. So yeah, with that, I think this level is just about done. I think the only thing I gotta do is add some ceilings everywhere, ceilings inside the crypts and obviously ceilings all throughout the ice caves down here, but we will get to that soon. Looking at this level from down below, it's just insane how big just level one is. It's a bit daunting to think I have to do this three more times, but I am not, I am not losing interest at all. I am ready to go. But while I'm down here looking at this and I see those magma blocks, it's reminding me of an idea that 
There was uh, there was some comments in one of my videos about an idea here that I want to try. So this right here is the river. You guys remember this magma blocks I have there to try and pull them down and suck them down to the bottom of the river. What I want to try and do is, and again, a, a great idea in the comments. I want to put a campfire right there. Oh wait, I got this backwards. I want to do a hay bale first and then the campfire. And I think that smoke should go through. Let's go see what that looks like. The idea being that I think there's gonna be like smoke coming out of the magma blocks. And I think that might look pretty amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, I think I like that a lot. Let's do that in a couple more spots. Let's get another one there. And then oh, maybe we even need to put some more magma block. Let me, let me see here, hold on. This is this is a great effect. I think maybe pull those magma blocks over and make another little patch right here. And we'll have two over there. What do you guys think? I like that. Let's give it a try. Okay, we do one right here. Skadoodle that up there. Little, little poof poof action. And another one over here. Badoink. And I want to see what it looks like. Not bad. Not bad. You know what I'm wondering? I, I'm wondering, do we even need the hay bales? As far as I know, the hay bales just make the puffs go higher and they're obviously hitting the ceiling, which is losing. It's not a good effect. I think the puffs will still go through even without the hay bale. And if they kind of dissipate in the in the mid range here, that might look good. I don't like that they're collecting on the ceiling. Let's try taking the hay bales out. Okay, they're out and back up. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. This is this is way better. I, I, the hay bales aren't even necessary. Look at that. They're just fading out right there at the perfect distance. I love this. What do you guys think? I think this is a better effect. Let me know. All right, guys, it is late at night. I'm going to wrap it up here. I am super excited with the progress we made today. Tons and tons of redstone got done today. It's, it's just exciting seeing that come together. And, you know, level one is the level design is 100% complete now. I like this room down here. Always looking for your feedback, and I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.